What's up, everybody? Soren Baker here on Unique Access, and today for Best Albums, we're joined by MC Ren. That's right. Thanks for having us, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, Ren has selected one of the preeminent great albums at the beginning of the rap record era, Criminal Minded by Boogie Down Productions. Yeah. So, Ren, why is Criminal Minded by Boogie Down Productions so important to you? I mean, you know, back in 87, you know, the uh, year I graduated high school, you know what I mean? and um. Used to listen to a lot of records on K-Day, but when Criminal Minded came out, it was just something about that, man. That was just so different. The album cover was so tight. Right. <laughs> you know, KRS and Skylar Rock on the cover with the guns, and you know, the whole album you can listen to from beginning to end was banging. The way KRS rhymed, his, his style, like, it was like a offbeat flow on some of the records, offbeat kind of style, but man, it, it was banging and what he was talking about was like, before we came out, you know, he was right. he was doing it, man, so. Speaking of banging, yeah, that nine millimeter goes banging. Yeah, so. yeah, he, that song right there was dope. He had a uh, poetry on it, I think it was on there, but poetry right. came out as a single, I believe, yeah. before that came out, but, and, um, so many, man. So many cuts on that. So with 9mm Goes Bang in particular, what, what resonated with you about that track? I like how he was like doing a little Jamaican flavor on there. Right. Knew the crack dealer by the name of Peter. Had to buck him down with my 9mm. Yeah, I like the whole thing, how he came out the flow, the story, everything. It was just, it was just perfect and then sonically of course out here at the time there was a lot more of the kind of electro right type of music right and in new york you had a lot of the you know we had graduated from kind of the house band disco -y type of rap music and then we had gone into like the houdini era right and then with the, with the criminal minded we had gotten kind of more like a running mc where it was sonically very stripped down and very minimal right right it was like more beats like Kicks and snares, you know what I mean? More kicks and snares and less uh, instruments and all of that type of stuff. So it was like, you know how Run DMC came along, it was like kicks and snares. Right, right. And I was just like, Psh, that's it. And then BDP came along and it was like, you know, just, it had that reggae feel, but it had that hip hop feel, but it wasn't too much uh, instruments, too much, you know what I mean? It was just kicks and snares and I, it was just dope, man. It was just. And of course, on this record uh, are the the songs that got Boogie Down Productions on the map with South Bronx and The Bridge Is Over. Oh, yeah. So which which of those songs uh, do you remember having more of an impact on you and why? I say The Bridge Is Over, man. And I even sampled that beat on my EP, Kiss My Black Ass. I remember that. Yeah, on Final Frontier, yeah. 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 The Bridge Is yeah. Over, they was going, uh, KRS was going at it with MC Shan. And I was like, damn, you know what I mean? He he let he let Shan have it, he let Marley have it, he let Roxanne Shantae have it, Mr. Magic, you know what I mean? I was like, damn, he going crazy on him. The beat, the rhymes was just he was a beast, man. KRS was a beast on the mic. He still is, you know. Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, with both of those records, The Bridges Over and South Bronx, one of the things that I think really KRS-One did as well as anyone else in rap history was that when he was going at somebody, he still made it super lyrical to where it was just like the punchlines and the metaphors and the imagery was still like top notch. It wasn't just a straight diss where mm -hmm. he was just doing punchlines. So for you as a rap fan, as somebody that, you know, was starting to write and getting into writing, like what did that dimension of the disses mean to you? I mean, I wasn't really focused back then. When I heard it, I wasn't really focused on dissing anybody in 87, you know what I mean? But listening to KRS-One, you know, uh, that, that, whole, uh, that whole album, man, Criminal Minded, it kind of helped going into doing what we was doing. You know what I mean? It was like, this dude did this, we gotta do this. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I always would look at other MCs and I would be like, you know, the delivery, and the voice, he had a unique voice, his delivery, and how he just, you know, went at a beat. And I, I looked at all the MCs like that. That's how when I started writing, I was like, I want everybody to look at me like that. You feel what I'm saying? I want people to study my style like that. How I study KRS and how I rock him and Chuck D and, you know, Melly Mel, Run, you know. 
people like that, man, you just, you study them, man. You know, like basketball players study other basketball players that came before, and that's what I did. But that Criminal Minded, that was like, I was banging that album like all of 87. And then you, know? uh, you mentioned poetry earlier. I thought that that was, uh, obviously it's a great record, but beyond that, I think that it showed kind of where Karis One was gonna be going more after Skylar Rock's uh, passing that more of kind of what Karis One really was about, more than the songs like Criminal Minded, Nine Millimeter Goes Bang. So for you, when you were hearing poetry, did it seem different at the time or did it just fit right in with you? Or yeah, when I heard poetry, man, before the album came, Criminal Minded even came out, I was just like, this cat is dope. This cat is dope. The, the lines he would have in there, um, just dope, man. And just then, uh, on the other thing, another song kind of dealing with the difference that we see later with Boogie Down Productions is the Super Hole record because that's totally something that uh, Boogie Down Productions and Karis One didn't do later in their career. Yeah, yeah. So when you were here in Super Hole and uh, Sky La Rock boasting about his sexual prowess and doing all this stuff, like how did that fit in on the album in your opinion? Shit, it fit, it fit in good to me because you know, I was doing like, uh, when I did Just Don't Bite It and She Swallowed It and all of that, that's kind of what that remind me of, that record, you know, the Super Ho record. Scholar Rock had them all, he was a Super Ho. You know, and when you young, man, you know, you out there chasing girls, you know, being, you know, crazy with it, you know what I mean? So being a young dude, straight out of high school, 87, it fit right into me. And then uh, there's also the word from our sponsor. Yeah. Uh, with that record, I always thought it was interesting in the sense that hearing at that point, rap records had been around, of course, for a while, but I had never really thought of saying something like that that seemed so like a commercial or something that was kind of interrupting the record. So for, for you, uh, how did you react to that song? I mean, it's like, again, that would fit right in too, but it, it wasn't like one of my... It was a tight song, but it wasn't one of my favorites off the album. Right, right. You know, I, I got my favorites on there. And that one was like, it was cool. That dun, 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 Yeah, it was tight, man, but you know, it fit, it fit in with the rest of them. You know what I mean? Like from beginning to end, I could listen to that whole album over and over. Like you can listen to every song on the album from beginning to end. But um, as far as like, um, some different songs I got my favorites you know I ain't gonna say I don't I do so which ones that we haven't talked about are some other favorites Shit, we probably did talk about my favorites my favorite was uh the bridge is over that's one of my favorites poetry that's one of my favorites why da da dan listen to my not man that's one of my favorites you know what I mean um but yeah those are like some of my favorites man okay but overall the overall album I, I love the album so then with the, being that this is the only Boogie Down Productions album with Skylar Rock, what do you think that, what do you think was special about his interaction with KRS? Man, to me, what I got from him and KRS was like they was brothers, you know what I mean? Like they was real close, you know what I mean? Like super close. I remember I saw some footage, uh, I think Matthew McDaniel, remember he used to shoot the little uh, footage back in the day? And he had some footage of him when they was in LA. And I, they was chilling together, and I just got the vibe I got from them like they was like super, super close. You feel what I'm saying? And um, I heard stories about it. Uh, I think I saw some KRS was talking about when he first met him or something like a, a, a the homeless. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So you know, somebody come and you know get you out of that situation or whatever, and y'all do music together. Y'all gonna be close because that, they had like history together and. Um, you know, just like brothers, man. Okay, so looking back on Boogie Down Productions' Criminal Minded, why do you think it's the best album? I mean, lyrically, the lyrics, the music, the imagery on the album cover, and um, what he represent, man. You know, KRS-One, you know what I mean? So, one of the dopest MCs ever. There it is, y'all. Yeah. That's why it's the best album Boogie Down Productions, Criminal Minded. And yeah. Friends in the building. I'm Soren Baker. Thanks for watching Unique Access.